benefit of being able to do damage and heal at the same time, which gives her quite the solid level 1 to 3 if the team can make use of it. So that might be exactly what Dewa United is going for, especially with a Franco and a Hayabusa. There's no way they're trying to just hold off and scale. Well, looking at the composition, right, why I feel I'm leaning more towards Rebellion is they have more crowd control with Edith, with the taunt from Fredrin and Paquito. It's going to be hard for them to look for a fight. So let's see how both of these compositions are going to fare in the Land of Dawn as we enter for game number one between both of these underdogs. Whew. Lethal ignition for both Ray and Watt, so full aggression, but will that be enough? Again, the front line of Rebellion, just so beefy right here. You can see the difference in clear speed. Not too apparent, but look at Sway Low! Oh my god, take a look at it on HP. Kitty says hello. First blood falls to the side of Dewa United. Well, I guess there you go, right? The prowess of Alunox in the mid lane, for sure it was facilitated by Leo Murphy there. But already a kill under one a minute. You just don't expect it, man. Lunox, late game, right? Needs items. That level one is devastating, man. That's gonna be a good first blood. Great start, but on the other hand, for the side of Rebellion Zion, though, having a Fredon in the jungle means that they, will, they won't be as prone to invades as Deva United is, so we'll have to see if they can just maneuver around it. There's three agilities as well, so you can see. Movement for Rebellion, penetration for Deva United. There's a big difference in focus. Damage, damage, and damage. Oh, here we go, DTZ. Ooh. Take a look at this. Leo Murphy now without flicker will not survive this time. Vincent picks up the kill. And I do want to say here, right, a highs on that purify. What it says is, I want to play it safe. But only, technically, the crowd control from the side of Leo Murphy here that can really lock Claude. But with that purify, it forces Leo Murphy to target elsewhere. Perhaps the mage, perhaps the beginner, but now top side, what? Taking a lot of damage, no spells, there you Ooh. go. Even with the flicker, Highs gets a kill now. Another re-engage, Shadow Kill with the help of Leo Murphy. Gets the kill as well, it's one to one, but favors the side of Rebellion that time. Yeah, 2 for 2 trade already here in the first two minutes of the game. You can see that both of these teams are looking for the pickoffs. Key's already being able to go up and rotate to pressure highs. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get it. Man, getting, I think Watt was a bit too late on the flicker there. He could have done it a bit earlier. Maybe bought a bit more time for his team to come in and collapse on that play. But just like that, Rebellion secures a lead on the top side and also gets a neutral objective. Looking at Talon's predictions by the Samsung Galaxy S series though. Even Stevens. Even Stevens. I just like being different at this point. <laughs> Eternus built different. I'm always... The other... The I, odd one out? Yeah, I'm always the odd one out, man. <laughs> Again, I should swap over to like the Indo desk. Actually, no, that would be a disaster. <laughs> that would be interesting Never to mind. see. For sure. <laughs> Alright, first three minutes already you can see here Rebellion Zion. They have a slight gold lead for the moment. But it doesn't mean that they haven't reached their power spikes just yet here. We can take a look at the items. Swaylo as well as the Lunox, not yet on that COD. You see a lot of steel leg plates being built on the side of Rebellion as well. And the Clock of Destiny being stacked up by Suelo, so for now it's still... Still gonna be a stacking game, but look at that. High is really going in aggressively. Blazing duet has been paused. Leo Murphy forced to use the flicker, but feather airstrike there. Oh! oh! With the flicker, extra aggressive, and Vincent here does not oh! have the range, but the hook, the hook finds the outplay. Vincent gets taken out here, minute three. What a statement by Leo Murphy there. He was nearly taken down by the damage coming in from the feather airstrike from Sway Low, but he was able to turn it around because of how aggressive Vincent was on the Fredrin. Very unfortunate for Rebellion Zion here. 
A lot of attention is being put on the gold lane right here, though. I think it's great, but that EXP lane is going to require a bit of attention to swing it in the balance, and that's what exactly Rebellion is doing. They go for Dixon, but he has a lot of a lot of resources unless cars can make something happen here. They need Dom, right? They really need Dom so if they really want to commit this Uranus pre-Dom. Let's just poke. Let's just uh, be a nuisance, but you can't really commit to on towards the kill, on towards Dixon. Not just yet. He's really, really annoying Vincent in the jungle here. You can see Vincent just reached level 7. Ray was there first. Leo Murphy! Oh, in the front side has no flicker. Will be taken out now. Keys perhaps has the order now. Oh, a oh, lot of crowd control. So no time to pop the order there. Gets taken out as well. And now look at this. The Royal United though has equalized on that uh, turtle. What? Need to be careful. It's a four-man rotation. Five-man rotation top side. And they really want to take the turret here. Oh. Oh, another catch on towards Watt this time. Caught and good night. Watt gets taken out. Rebellion again with the proactiveness here early game. Yeah, with no objectives on the board just yet. Rebellion's Zion look for the second best, which is pressure onto Watt. Onto the carry of Dewa United. That kill is going to put him in a little bit of a pickle. But meanwhile... You can see here, Ray already getting some trades on the board, getting that tower on the bottom side as the audience prediction is slowly starting to favor Dewa United here. Right then, Rebellion just keeps pressuring right here, and that is the value of crowd control. Dewa United, they're trying to move away from these threats, but they just can't do it. And even if you have outplay tools like the Brilliance, you're just not allowed to pop it in time. And Rebellion Zion, they're doing a good job at layering the crowd control. But if you look at the stats so far, it's still an even situation for these structures, and that is where it's important. Leo Murphy will need the vision game to augment his hooking game, and if he doesn't have that, it's going to be a bit more difficult with Ryan Zion having three beefy members that are willing to just take that iron hook. The agenda here, it seems like the taking the turret bot side, and they want United. Again, because they lack in that crowd control, they're heavily banking on those hooks. Without those hooks, they can't really engage. And that's why they need to suffer another loss on that turret. Yeah, they need to rely heavily on to Leo Murphy right now. And but the way that Rebellion Zion have been positioning, it's not giving them an easy time as well. Because let's say, let's say he lands onto a hook. I guess there is burst from the Hayabusa, but what if the Hayabusa is still farming in the... Oh, wait a minute, Audi TZ! Hot here to press, but Feather Airstrike is there to somehow deal damage. He gets taken down though, but take a look at the re-engage now. Keys flickering away, Vincent still on the man on Dixon, trying to buy time in the backside. Finally, with the recall, oh! another hook, Ooh. but the Purify saves the day. Now Cars trying to deal damage, Vincent find an angle, but does not connect just yet. It's still a 4v4 now, Rebellion Zion still winning that trade because the mid side falls. They get a turret as well as going for this turtle right here. And you can see they, oh, they engage onto Audi TZ, but that's fine. Everyone else can re-engage afterwards and they are not getting the opportunity to try and threaten Sway low as well as highs. And so they are just relatively safe. And on the flip side, you have to wonder how long can Dixon just keep cards under control. You're really seeing his damage starting to stack up and now they're going straight for the purple. Mm. Oh, yeah, he was able to hook it, right? Right now, Leo Murphy on the Franco. His iron hook hit rate is 5 of 11, so 45%. But if he keeps hitting Audi TZ, that's actually the perfect gap closer for Audi TZ to use Earth Shatter onto his own member. So, not really a good at target for him. Mm. That's the situation right here because for both teams, when they're just waiting around looking for a pickoff, Devil United, they can like hook the wrong target, but for Rebellion Zion, you know, anyone, anyone that they jump on, right, can be bursted down. Even Dixon, because they can take him down before he can pop the Consecration. He is going Flicker, not a Purify. Again, this is also why that Purify is key, right? Earlier we saw that Claude got hooked, but because he was on that Purify, he is still safe. So again, Yo Murphy was forced to find another viable target, perhaps that Mage, perhaps that Bukito, but then again, because they lack CC, that Purify just is just so huge for that Claude, right? It makes uh, Leo Murphy's job even harder. Looking at the gold right here, Sway Low actually is a bit low in that department, but everyone else is doing good, so that's still pretty okay. 
And we talked about how the late game is where Keys wants to shine, but he is just not having a good time right now. 500 gold behind, and he can't really have the security to try and go in with the Chaos Order and burst down the beefier members because he just gets counter-engaged so much. And with that pressure, just like that, Heiss gets a random tower out of nowhere. He can BMI out, right? Let's see, Leo Murphy does not spot Heiss Ooh. just yet. He doesn't even need to. He does not need to. And take a look at the purple already invaded here. Hayabusa might, yeah, he might be late to the party. We'll see, we'll see. Already hooked. It doesn't land Vincent. Is he going to use his Retribution? He doesn't even need the Retribution. Wait, hang on. Dixon, did Dixon get it? No. Dixon got it. What? Dixon got the oh, purple. Oh yeah, Dixon got he has it. purple. He's saving the Retribution for the Lord, so it's a wise choice, unfortunately. But it also denies the purple from Ray. No energy, no big amounts of outplay coming out, and they can't contest. Rebellion gets a free Lord. Yeah, Rebellion Zion are out maneuvering their United Esports here. They're able to... Just get more advantage. I guess the Claude, his mobility, being able to split the map has been really, really intense for their United Esports. That they can't find a way to handle it. There's a game of fun fact here by Grab. Very different to Season 11 where Lapu Lapu was one of his main heroes of 67 times pick rate. Season 12, he's picked up to the Paquito as well as the Uranus. So you can see that Cars has adapted to the new meta, exploring new roles, and the impact has been crazy. He did mention that he feels like now, he feels like this is his true calling. So he's had a lot more confidence coming in, uh, coming in into the XP lane compared to the previous season. Now Rebellion, they are looking for a chance right here. They have all the engages, the hook does not land. And now that means Rebellion can strike. Oh, Dirksen now trying to be the sandbag there, but does not succeed as, yeah, the mid lane turret tier 2 will fall. Lord Macho still top side here. It seems like only two waves will crash down. The other, the, the third, the bottom lane will not come in time. Oh, the hook flicker comes in. The damage though does not come through. Vincent still escapes. Audi TZ in the front side, taking a lot of damage. He gets taken out. Now with the shadow kill, does not really give significant damage. But then again, they failed to defend the top tier base turret. Again, Rebellion's out here. A man for a turret. I mean, I guess in a way, it's worth it for Rebellion Zion for sure because they lose... Because Dewa United had to lose that tower in the top side in an inhibitor turret. But if Rebellion Zion don't close this as soon as possible, Dewa United Esports, they're gonna hit that power spike. Sure, they were expecting some more of a presence from the Brody in the early game. But remember, Dewa United, they have the Lunox who picked up the Weapon Master, so... A lot more late game insurance for her. And I'm wondering if we can actually get to see the items, how far she's in. Does she have Clock of Destiny Lightning Truncheon built already? Does she have the penetration yet? Because when that hits, Rebellion Zion, they need to be careful. Need to be careful, but they have a lot of crowd control to try and outplay around that. And even in the late game, a Farsa and a Claw, that's a lot of damage for Dewa United to be able to just survive through. So let's take a look at the instant replay by the Samsung Galaxy A series. Initially, there's that hook onto Vincent, knowing that he's a prior member. Look at all the TZ. Comes in, stops the bloody hunt. As an exchange, they took his life out, but he saves Vincent's life. The jungler available for a neutral objective take, and still they were able to get that turret. So overall, great coordination from this team, from the new roamer, all the TZ as well. Yeah, he's been doing crazy. He's been getting a lot of good Earth Shatters even in the early game, being able to pressure Watt, who should notoriously have a little bit more damage than the Claude in the early game. Eventually, it was Heiss being able to now have a level ahead of Watt. Very difficult. Does the Brody scale great into the late game? Not as good as the Claude. Oh, yeah, there you go! Ooh. Earth Shatter connects and take a look at the Feather Air Strike. It's gonna be huge, but Audi TZ falls in the process now. Dixon. Taking some heat, still surviving. It's 5v4 now. Rebellion, they need to somehow retreat and find a better angle. Now they lost one member, but they have all the ultimates ready. There's only two on the side of Dewa United. This is something that Rebellion can try and take advantage of, but it's going to be risky. They go for it, though. Oh my god, no further airstrike here. Dixon, quarter of HP with the... Oh my god, he's now back to full HP. Man, now 5v4 Rebellion trying to delay the Lord take. Very, very smart. Now Audi Z is in the building. So let's see, it's an even fight yet again. Wait a second. Leo Murphy is going to be able to get a pick here. 
Dewa United Esports utilize their advantage. They're getting uh, that tower in the mid lane. Oh, suppression comes through. The damage is there. Feather Iron Strike. Dixon taking some heat. Gets taken out. And now it's a 5v4. Take a look at highs. Free hitting towards Ooh. Leo Murphy. And now Dewa United, they are backing off. It's a free lord for the Blue Bulls. Dixon just walking up without the consecration. Gets taken out. They were united. We thought they were going to be the chaotic ones, but they went into that fight unprepared. Two members caught out in the front, and the backline just can't get close enough due to the CC and AoE threats. Finally, let's take a look at the items. Almost a full build for Heiz. He might just go for a Radiant on Athena just to ensure that the Lunox gets damage, gets put under control. Already with the Wind of Nature, he is no longer concerned about the Torn Apart memory or the Shadow Kill. And for Sway Low, man, with a lightning transition available, it's a lot of burst. Take a look here, the connection comes through. Oh, Leo Murphy very low, but has the Immortal. Does not pop it just yet, but oh. the more finds wow. the base turret. Now Lord still marching top side, still even 5v5. Rebellion will not commit on towards the fight just yet, realizing that their marksman is quite low. Very, very disciplined here from the side of Rebellion Zion. They were they should have been able to get that mid lane, but they didn't want to force it. They were united now, having a little bit more space here after that siege, going to be able to get that purple buff for the side of Ray, picking up an endless battle. So he's getting to that item power spike. Quite late though. Item power spikes at 15 minutes. It's not what you want to count on ideally, but it's good for Dewa United for sure. For Rebellion, <laughs> they know that, they understand that the late game is in their hands, sort of. They have the range advantage, the AoE teamfight advantage, the crowd control, and frontline advantage as well. So, they knew that Dewa United was, were low as well as they, uh, as they are, but they know that Dewa United can just go back to their base, regen up, and join the fight again. So, they back away. And that was a very wise decision because you saw that Leo Murphy was looking for the counter engage right after regening. Speaking of Leo Murphy, if you saw the hook rate cut by half. Yeah. 40% earlier on, <laughs> now down to 20%. But we saw that. We saw that the last time he picked up the Franco, right? It wasn't yep. how he started. It's how he finishes. Mm -hmm. And so it all really just banks on him. If he can get a really good hook either onto highs, which is very impossible, because he has a Purify, or maybe even Swaylo. That definitely is a an advantage that Dewa United Esports can exploit. Not saying it's going to be easy though. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned that the only proper engage list from that hook, right? That's why Leo Murphy is just spamming his hooks, looking for the fight, because if not, there's no crowd control anymore, any elsewhere from side of Dewa United. So again, they're really, really somehow banking on those hooks. So... Yeah, you know, low win rate and a low, low percentage rate on the hook, it's okay. But what if we go at it in a different perspective? Can Dewa United Esports capitalize over the fact that they can rotate around the map with Dixon maybe split pushing? Is that an option for them? Well, Dixon split pushing is definitely a problem, but the issue, right, which is, I think, a solution a lot of teams are using for this Uranus is that Karn is on the Paquito with the sprint, with more dashes than the Uranus. He can easily clear the waves and come back to the fights faster than the Uranus can. All the Uranus can do is just be more survivable, but considering that he's up against a sprint quantum charge Paquito, that in itself is a dangerous endeavor. Mm -hmm. Now, we can see here the Lord Dance starting to brew. But, well, the far lane is somehow favoring Rebellion Zion, slowly pushing. Brody cleared Whoa. the mid side and forcing Rebellion to respond. Question mark. Let's see highs though. Whoa, poking Dixon to a quarter HP. No problem, Lord. 30,000 HP on that Lord. Let's see. Ray positioning himself top side. Feather airstrike has been popped. Whoa. Here, prematurely, Ray now repositioned himself in that spot. Was he spotted? Cars now looking for that angle and opening. Lord, it seems like should be delayed here in this current state. Bottom lane, bro. Bottom lane slowly pushing, forcing no Brody. Brody. Okay, they're forcing a fight now. RTZ finding Leo Murphy, has Immortal, has the flicker, gets popped though. Now say goodnight to Leo Murphy as if he will go down for 40. Rebellion with the man advantage will surely take this Lord comfortably. That wasn't a good Lord set up by Dewa United. They weren't controlling that bottom lane. 
And now, because they saw that, oh god, no. Uh -oh. Audi TZ! He's caught. Dixon, though, will be... Oh, take a look at the Shadow Kill. Force the Claw to use the Wind of Nature in time. Sway low, Feather, airstrike now. Careful, Audi oh. TZ finds Ray. No Shadow. Where are you going, Ray? He's going very low, but he still survives in that certain state. Dixon now trying to deal the damage as Rebellion recollects, regathers with the Lord. That wasn't great at all for Adewa United. Rebellion Zion, they were playing around, realizing that Watt was already in the bottom lane, and that's when they pulled the trigger. With a man disadvantaged without their main core damage dealer, it was very difficult for Adewa United to find anything across the board. Well now, Rebellion are trying to crack open the base, but the Lord is left somewhat alone because they were overstaying in that fight. They will have an empowered minion wave to try and make the place, to try and get this turret, and I think with the Iron Hook down, they're gonna go for it. Yep, Feather Airstrike now early to zone away, Dixon. Oh, the damage is too much. Three Dominus Ice in the side of Rebellion, but he's able to survive with the Flicker as well. And now it's officially three base turrets taken out by the side of Dewa United, but then again, they survive to see another day. For now, with the way things are going, Rebellion, they're just playing so patient. Right there, they knew that the wave was pushing, like you mentioned, Eterna, but there's nothing they can do about it. The, way, the, the base turret is no longer there. So Devil United was pressured to try and make a play right there, and it just didn't work out. At this point, I think it's late enough in the game that going for a fight, going for more death timers, might be more beneficial than the Lord itself. But Rebellion Zion might not even allow that to happen. Immortals are still available, which means, worst case scenario, someone gets hooked, someone Aww. gets picked up, they'll still be alive. Careful, Dixon. Again, it's just Dixon. That's the uh, opener here. No Rebellion wills. I don't know. Uh, committing on towards Dixon at this point, I don't know if it's the right call. Let's see, though. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I like that you brought that up, Arashi, because. Remember, now that all three base turrets are exposed, if they go for that kind of 5v5 Lord Dance, once again, Rebellion Zion have to Claude, right? He mm -hmm. could definitely go in for a split push maneuver, head straight to the base. So Dell United, they need to be way more calculated with the way that they control the waves, or it might just be Rebellion Zion outsmarting them without even going for a team fight. But this is the problem. You can say that Dixon can still be a nuisance, can still clear, in relative safety, they can't burst him down even if they use three ultimates uh, like they're trying to do right now, actually. Yeah, forcing to oh. use the old with the flicker very aggressively. Audi TC now, quarter HP, but Leon Murphy flickers away. Highs with the blazing duet. Does not find anyone just yet. Oh, with the re-engage now, Leon Murphy very low gets taken out as well. And now it's a 1-5-B-4. Watt forces to use the Wind of Nature very low. Will he be taken out? But it seems like Audit TZ will fall first as Vixen, 1 HP still surviving. But Keys forced to use the Winter Truncheon. But Pekito is there to secure the kill. Oh, now, Ray, Ray, Ray. Ray looking for an angle does not quite get it. At the end of the day, it's a 3-4-4. Two for one, rather, but three man for four is still standing. It doesn't feel like Keys is able to target the damage properly because of how much disengage that Rebellion Zion has. And in the end, Keys, without her ultimate, going to be able to get taken down really quick here. I think Ray's going to go for a 50-50. He needs to be careful. He needs to be very, very careful now. Lord Dance, oh hi, he's a win of nature, blazing duet. The damage isn't really there. Immortal Pogs, but take a look at Hayabusa, gets taken out by the one and only cars. Lord will be secured, and this might be it. With the Lord, this might be the final push. That's 60 second cooldown on Ray. That's way too long. It's the beginning of the end for sure. Rebellion using all their resources to rush through the Lord and as well as zone everyone from Dewa United behind away from the Lord. Cars, man, against the Hayabusa, against a Pakiro, you do not want that smoke. With the Hunter Strike here, he didn't even go for the Bloodlust Axe. He's not here to try and regen, to try and survive. He's no. here to just tank damage and beat you up with the Lord marching in right now. Rebellion, go for the final play. Two wave crashing down. Vincent trying to find the opening. Oh, take a look at Cars in the backside. Healing a lot of damage on towards what He still survives though. Dixon has the immortality. Now Lord focusing on the base and say goodnight to Dewa. Game one goes to the side of Rebellion Zion. The Blue Bulls strike first.
showing their fearsomeness against the newcomers, baring their teeth, kicking them out with their horns. But of course, this is a best of three, ladies and gentlemen. There is still one more game to be won. But what a performance by Rebellion Zion. Everything, man. Even in that final fight.